In my previous video, I talked about the 2300 year prophecy in Daniel chapter 8. In this video, we're going to look at all the time prophecies in the book of Daniel. The 1260, 1290, 1335 and the 2300 day prophecies. All of these time prophecies overlap and they relate to the abomination of desolation. And we will see how each of these prophecies has already been fulfilled and how they all interrelate to one another. So join me as we find out. So the abomination of desolation is basically describing something that is abominable and that destroys. And Jesus warned that this abomination of desolation would appear in the holy place. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso reads let him understand, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. This prophecy was to have a dual fulfillment, as Jesus was addressing two separate abominations of desolations in the book of Daniel. The first one was the destruction of Jerusalem and the Jewish temple in 70 AD at the hands of the Roman armies. And this is the abomination of desolation referred to in Daniel chapter 9, which was to come after the 70-week prophecy expired in 33 AD. But there was also one abomination of desolation which was to happen in the future, and this one was to be tied to the appearance of the Antichrist. So in order to know what the abomination of desolation is, we need to know who the Antichrist is and when he was to appear. Now many people today believe that the Antichrist has not yet been revealed, and that the abomination of desolation refers to a time when a future Antichrist will sit in a rebuilt Jewish temple in Jerusalem, and when abominable sacrifices will be performed in the temple. But as I covered in my video Antichrist Revealed, the Antichrist has already appeared, and the Antichrist power is the Roman Catholic Church, which ruled in the Dark Ages, as all Protestants once recognized. The papacy ruthlessly persecuted the saints throughout the Dark Ages, blasphemously claiming unto herself the prerogatives of God, and teaching a false gospel for many centuries. And as we look through the scriptures, and as I covered in my video on the Third Temple in Prophecy, the Temple of God in 2 Thessalonians cannot be referring to a literal Jewish temple, but is the body of believers or the Christian church. And Paul warned in 2 Thessalonians that the Antichrist was to sit in the temple of God after a great falling away from the truth. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the second coming of Christ, shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This great apostasy developed in the early centuries after Christ, as the church became increasingly compromised with pagan doctrines and practices, especially in the days of Constantine, the stage was set for the man of sin to make his appearance. And to know when the abomination of desolation was set up, we need to know the period of Antichrist's reign, and when he started ruling. According to Daniel chapter 7, the papal Antichrist was to rule for a time, times and half a time. But this is equal to the periods of 42 months and 1260 days found in the book of Revelation. And as the Protestant world once recognized, the day for a year principle applies when dealing with Bible prophecy, which means that one day in prophecy equals one literal year. And so the 1260 days of Antichrist's reign were in fact 1260 literal years during which the papacy ruled in the Dark Ages. This 1260 year period began in the year 538 AD when church and state were united in Rome and when the papacy was given civil power to persecute the saints. And it lasted until the year 1798 when the papal states were abolished and the papacy lost its political power. And in Daniel chapter 12, the end of the 1260 years is given as a historical marker to calculate when the abomination of desolation was to be set up. Daniel chapter 12 refers to the time of the end, and it says that this time of the end would end after the time times and half a time of Antichrist's reign. So after the 1260 years of the Antichrist's reign had expired, and as we saw, the papacy's reign ended in 1798. Daniel was told that the words of the prophecy were sealed until the time of the end, and desiring to know when the time of the end would be, Daniel asked, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And the answer came, 
And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that lives for ever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So Daniel asked when the time of the end would be, and the answer came that it would be at the end of the 1260 year prophecy, which ended in 1798. So 1798 is when the time of the end referred to in Daniel chapter 12 began. And the angel then revealed to Daniel another time prophecy, the prophecy of the 1290 days. And from the time that the daily shall be taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. No starting point is given for the 1290 day prophecy, but we do have the ending date for this prophecy, and the ending date of the 1290 day prophecy is 1798, when the time of the end began. And we know this because the whole theme of Daniel chapter 12 is the time of the end. The time of the end, which began in 1798, is the only historical marker given in Daniel chapter 12. After stating that the time of the end was to begin at the end of the 1260 year prophecy, in 1798, the angel then says that there would be 1290 days from the time that the abomination of desolation is set up, and he gave no starting point for the 1290 day prophecy. But, as we said, the only historical marker in Daniel chapter 12 is 1798, the time of the end. So the only obvious conclusion is that the time of the end, was 1798, is the time when the 1290 day prophecy was to end. So when the angel says that from the time that the abomination of desolation is set up, there would be 1290 days, he means from the time that the daily is taken away until the time of the end, there would be 1290 years. So the 1290 days are 1290 literal years, which begin 1290 years before the time of the end began in 1798. And this means that the 1290 year prophecy was to begin in the year 508 AD, a full 30 years before the 1260 years began. So both the 1260 and 1290 year prophecies were to end in 1798, with the 1290 year prophecy starting in 508 AD, and the 1260 year prophecy starting 30 years later in 538. And the prophecy tells us that the visible sign of the beginning of the 1290 years was to be the taking away of the daily and the setting up of the abomination of desolation, and that the abomination of desolation signified the rise of the apostate Roman Church was recognized by the Protestant reformers. Sayer Rudd, writing in 1734, By the daily sacrifice here I understand the pure worship of God under the Gospel, and by its being taken away, the suppression or corruption of that worship by the anti-Christian tyranny taking place on the rise of the papal apostasy. This, I suppose, may be intended in the next words, which seem to me in a great measure explanatory of the last, and the abomination that makes desolate set up. Abomination in scripture frequently signifies idols, and so here aptly represents the idolatry of the Romish church, by which a desolation is made in the pure doctrine and discipline of the gospel. So the abomination of desolation and the start of the 1290 year prophecy was to be a visible sign of the rise of the power of the Roman Catholic Church. And Daniel chapter 11 gives us another criteria to identify the start of this period. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily, and they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. This is talking about the same papal power, and it tells us that arms would stand on the part of the papacy, or that military force would be used to advance the cause of the Roman Catholic Church. So there had to be some visible sign of the ascendancy of the Roman Catholic Church around the year 508, 30 years before the 1260 years began, and military force was to be used to advance the interests of the Roman Church. At this time in history, in 508 AD, the Western Roman Empire had recently been split up into ten kingdoms. None of those kingdoms were initially Roman Catholic. They were either pagan or they belonged to other Christian groups. But for the papal antichrist to make his appearance, and for the ten kings to give their power to the beast, this had to change. These kingdoms had to convert to Roman Catholicism and to enforce Catholic doctrine in their kingdoms. And this is what is meant by the abomination of desolation being set up. 
And this process began at the start of the 1290 years in 508 AD, in the reign of Clovis, king of the Franks. Clovis was the first of the ten kings to convert to Roman Catholicism, being baptized in the year 496 AD on Christmas Day in the French city of Reims. Having acquired a powerful champion in Clovis, France became known as the eldest son of the church, being the first of the ten kingdoms to embrace Roman Catholicism. And as the Catholic Encyclopedia notes, the Frankish kingdom was thenceforth the representative and defender of Catholic interests throughout the West. And it was in 508 AD, just as the prophecy foretold, that Clovis used military force to defend the interests of the Roman Church over their Aryan enemies. The Visigoths were of the Aryan faith and occupied large parts of Spain as well as Gaul, which is in modern-day France, and they were bitter enemies of the Roman Catholic Church. The 6th century historian Gregory of Tours tells us of the religious nature of Clovis' declaration of war upon the Visigoths in the spring of 507. It is with regret that I see the Aryan heretics in possession of any part of Gaul. Let us, with the help of God, march against them and, after having conquered them, bring their country under our control. So this was described as a religious war by historians close to that time. And the war started in the year 507 AD. And by the year 508 the Visigoths were defeated at Toulouse and driven from Gaul, as Clovis expanded his Frankish kingdom. And this was a historic victory for the Roman Catholic Church. So just as the prophecy foretold, arms stood on the part of the Roman power. Military force was used to advance the interests of the Roman Catholic Church for the first time after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. And this was fulfilled through the military expeditions of Clovis, King of the Franks, in the year 508. As the historian Walter C. Perry noted, the kingdoms of the West Goths and the Burgundians had become the kingdom of the Franks. It was decided that the Franks, and not the Goths, were to direct the future of destinies of Gaul and Germany, and that the Catholic faith, and not Arianism, was to be the religion of these great realms. So it was in 508 AD that the abomination of desolation was set up, and when the Catholic Church gained considerable ground against her enemies. And not long after, the rest of the European kings followed suit, and converted to the Roman Catholic faith. And Daniel chapter 12 then tells us of another time prophecy, the prophecy of the 1335 days, which was to begin at the same time as that of the 1290. And from the time that the daily shall be taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waits, and comes to the thousand three hundred and thirty-five days. Again, no starting point is given for the 1335 day prophecy, but it is clear from the context that the 1335 days is an extension of the 1290 given in the previous verse, so that the 1335 began at the same time as the 1290. And as we saw that the 1290 years were to begin in the year 508 AD, so the 1335 year prophecy was to also begin in the same year. But while the 1290 year prophecy terminated in the year 1798, the 1335 was to extend to 1843. And this coincides with another time prophecy which I covered in my previous video, the prophecy of the 2300 years, which also ended in 1843 when the sanctuary was to be cleansed. The 2300 year prophecy is an overarching time prophecy in Daniel chapter 8, which covers and includes all the other time prophecies in Daniel, and covers the same time period and the same theme as the 1260, 1290 and 1335 year prophecies. And this theme is the taking away of the daily and the setting up of the papal apostasy. And in Daniel chapter 8 we are told that after the 2300 year prophecy expires, the sanctuary was to be cleansed. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spoke, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily, and the transgression of desolation, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And as I covered in my previous video, the twenty-three hundred year prophecy began at the same time as the seventy-week prophecy in Daniel chapter 9, in the year 458 BC. And the 2300 year prophecy ended in 1843, when the great time of judgment of God's people began. Both the 2300 and the 1335 year prophecies are dealing with the same theme, the abomination of desolation. And the 1335 year prophecy in Daniel chapter 12 
was to end at the same time as the 2300 year prophecy in Daniel chapter 8, and they were both pointing to the end time judgment which began in 1843. And it is seen in the very next verse that the 1335 year prophecy is pointing to a time of judgment. And we know this because it says that at the end of the days, meaning at the end of the 1335 days in the previous verse, Daniel was to arise to his lot or to his inheritance. But you, go your way till the end, for you shall rest, and will stand in your lot at the end of the days. This cannot be talking about the resurrection of the saints at the second coming of Christ, because the context of this passage is the end of the days discussed in the previous verse, which is the 1335 day prophecy. So both the 1335 and the 2300 year prophecies were pointing to a time of judgment that began in the year 1843. So Daniel chapter 12 is crucial because it links together all the time prophecies in the book of Daniel. Both the 1290 and 1335 year prophecies start at the same time in the year 508 AD when the abomination of desolation was set up. The 1290 years extend from 508 to the expiry of the 1260 year prophecy in 1798, while the 1335 year prophecy extends from 508 AD and expires in 1843, which coincides with the expiry of the 2300 year prophecy from Daniel chapter 8. And this ingenious mathematical miracle was recognized by the Protestant reformers, and they predicted that these time prophecies were to be filled in exactly this way long before their fulfillment. John Tillinghouse writing in 1654, Whosoever is not satisfied with that beginning we have formerly laid down, but seeks another, must mind these two things. 1. That he so fixed the head of the 1335 days, as that he makes them expire at the same point with the 2300. 2. That he also make the 1290, which arises from the same head with the 1335, to end at the same point with the 1260. And as another author wrote in 1699, there are two other great numbers in Daniel chapter 12, one of 1290, the other 1335, which is 45 more than the other, so that although they both begin together, they do not both end together by 45 years. And that they begin together is evident, for the 45th is the addition of so many to the 1290. Therefore it is said, Blessed is he that lives to 1335. So that whenever these 1335 years begin, they end with the 2300 years also. Again, the 1290 is 30 more than 1260. Therefore, though they may end together, yet they cannot begin together. The Protestant reformers were clear from their study of the scriptures, that both the 1335 and the 2300 years were to end together in the same year, and that the 1260 years were to end in the same year as the 1290. The starting point for the 1260, 1290 and 1335 year prophecies are firmly rooted in history, and so the ending of the 1335 year prophecy in 1843 confirms without any doubt that the 2300 year prophecy also ends in the same year, in 1843. The 2300 year prophecy could not begin in 457 BC and end in 1844, as some believe, because then the 2300 years would end one year later than the 1335. And it is clear from the context of Daniel 12 and the whole book of Daniel that they had to end at the same time. So the 2300 year prophecy ran from 458 BC to 1843. And there are some other reasons why the 2300 year prophecy was to start in 458 and not in 457 BC. Growing independent evidence shows that the start of Artaxerxes' reign was in the year 465 BC and not 464, meaning that the seventh year of his reign, when the 2300 years and the 70 weeks began, was in 458 BC and not in 457. Another reason is the timing of the crucifixion of Christ. The Bible tells us that Jesus was crucified on a Friday Passover. And this was in the middle of the 70th week of Daniel chapter 9. And this is 483 years after the decree of Artaxerxes in the seventh year of his reign. If the seventh year of his reign was in 457 BC, then this means that the crucifixion of Christ would have been in 31 AD. But the problem here is that there was no Friday Passover in 31 AD. The only way to resolve this problem is to understand that the seventh year of Artaxerxes' reign was one year earlier in 458 BC instead of 457. 
with the 458 BC starting point for the 70 weeks and 2300 year prophecies, Christ was to be crucified in the year 30 AD, and there was a Friday Passover in the year 30 AD. So this is in line with what the Bible describes, and not 31 AD, where there was no Friday Passover. So this further confirms that the 2300 year prophecy and the 70 week prophecy started one year earlier in 458 BC, instead of 457. But the strongest proof for the 2300 years ending in 1843 is the fact that the 1335 year prophecy ended in that year. The firmest and most provable of all the prophecies in the book of Daniel is the 1260 year prophecy. It is relatively recent in history compared to the other time prophecies and it is well attested by many sources. It began in 538 AD when Justinian gave power to the Roman Church and it ended in 1798 when Napoleon's armies abolished the Papal States and ended the papacy's civil power. And the 1290 and 1335 year prophecies are based on the 1260 year prophecy because we are told that the 1290 and 1335 both start 30 years before the 1260 years began. Since 538 is the certain beginning of the 1260 years, both the 1290 and 1335 were to begin in 508 AD. And this means that the 1335 ended in 1843. And as we saw, the 1335 and 2300 year prophecies were both to end in the same year. So as the 1335 ended in 1843, there is no doubt that the 2300 year prophecy also ended in 1843. For if the 1290 points to the end of one prophecy, which is the 1260, then the 1335 also ends with another time prophecy, which is the 2300. The 1335 and 2300 year prophecies cannot possibly end in different years. There is no biblical basis for this, and any claim that the 2300 years ended one year later in 1844 is unbiblical and based on a faulty timeline. So in conclusion, the 1260-year prophecy began in 538 and ended in 1798. The abomination of desolation was set up 30 years earlier in 508 AD in the reign of Clovis, king of the Franks. And 508 AD was the starting point of two other prophecies. The first of these was the 1290, which expired together with the 1260 in the year 1798. And the other was the 1335 year prophecy, which ended at the same time as the 2300 year prophecy in 1843. And the expiry of the 1335 year prophecy in 1843 confirms without a doubt that the 2300 year prophecy started in 458 BC and ended in 1843. And as we saw, all of these time prophecies in the book of Daniel are closely related. They are fixed in time and each one confirms the correct starting and ending date of the others. So thanks for watching, let me know your comments below, and see you in the next one.